Alrighty, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Raw Conversations where we will be sharing insights and having some meaningful conversations with some amazing people in the nutrition and wellness space. I'm your host Sharon Cryan, founder and CEO of Food Nerd and today's guest is Stephanie Bodwin. Stephanie Bodwin is the co-founder and owner of Crummy's Meatless Crumble. Uh, she is located in Colorado and proud to say she was born in Alaska. Um, she's a graphic designer turned food entrepreneur um, and thrilled to be a small business owner in an exciting and innovative vegan landscape. So Stephanie, welcome so much to Raw Conversations. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Awesome. So Stephanie, if you could just give us a little bit um, high level about a little background about yourself and what is Crummies? Yes. So it is a plant-based meat alternative. Um, it behaves like ground meat in any recipe, but all of our seven simple ingredients come from the land and not the lab. Um, this was developed um, out of necessity after I went plant-based. Um, I was just seeing a lot of, a lot of uh, processed ingredients going into some of the larger um, meat alternatives I was seeing on the grocery shelves and decided that there was a better way to do it and that these companies may be frankly doing it wrong. So I, I kind of went, went to the drawing board, um, started playing with tastes and textures, and we've come up with a really fantastic recipe that is all natural. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> so Stephanie, so I kind of like to ask everybody what their vegan story is. So if you can kind of say um, when you went plant-based and why you went plant-based, so everybody can kind of get a little bit of back of, of your why. Definitely. So I, um, back in 2017, the summer of 2017, you know, this might be a kind of a, a lame story, but I watched the movie Oakja, which was on Netflix. Um, it was a fictitious story about a society where they are raising, like the world is raising these super pigs um, for consumption for the planet. And I live in a very agricultural county in Colorado. So my drive home is, I pass at least five huge feedlots where I see, you know, these cattle and what they're going through. And it, it really hit home to me. And it was literally that night I gave up on commercialized meat and went on this plant-based journey. And I am so thrilled that I did. Um, but it was, yeah, it meant, it meant a lot to me to do it. And um, yeah, it was just that night. I just did it. That's amazing. And so your, your journey um, a lot of the people that we have on here, their main why was for health reasons. So your journey was first compassion. It was. Um, and I love that, you know, honestly, and I, I watched, is it, is it Ocha? Yeah. Okay. J A. I think. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember I watched it when it first came out because I just, it popped up and I was like, Oh, right. I watched this. And I cried the whole time. Like I was just, my heart was broken. Um, but it was so like beautifully done. And the thing is like, what it what it actually is is saying is like things that have been happening for decades so it's not like this super fictitious you know that's kind of the things that are happening and have Absolutely. been happening and I think that you know you know thank god that came out because I didn't even think initially that it would hit people um from the vegan ethical side and you know knowing that that was like what made it click for you um just shows how much power that you know compassion really has so so that's amazing oh okay so um so you went you went to vegan you that kind of hit you um what was your what was your attitude about like being able to stick with it like were you nervous or because since you you weren't really motivated from the health side you were the compassion side were you you know what was your mindset and how did you kind of get through that well I kind you know I was I was a little nervous at first like the next day I was just kind of looking around my fridge and pantry like, all right, so I decided to do this. Now, now what? I didn't do, you know, obviously didn't do much research going into it. Um, it was just sort of, you know, head first, let's do this. My husband um, does, did most of the cooking at the time and he did not go plant-based. Um, he still eats meat, which is fine. But we, we decided, you know, we were gonna work together and be supportive of each other and really try and figure this out. So, you know, I did a lot of the, you know, veggie stir fries and kind of, kind of delve, delve in that way. But I, we noticed that it was kind of becoming a struggle to keep it fun and interesting and also easy to, you know, make one meal for both of us and that we both enjoy. So out came crummies. And now, you know, I think that, I think that there's so many products and recipes out there for plant-based eating that it's become 
time more accessible and easier for everybody. It doesn't have to be scary. You don't have to do loads of research on it. Um, if you've got the, you know, the drive and the passion for it, it's absolutely, absolutely there for you. That's awesome. So, you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, I've always kind of struggled with, you know, is I was always, I was single and independent when I decided to really go plant-based. And so, you know, it was just my decision and I went all in and I, you know, while my friends and family obviously didn't, didn't go plant-based, you know, I didn't, I lived with myself. And so I was able to kind of keep my fridge and keep, you know, everything that, that with, you know, kind of match with felt right for me, but um, your husband isn't, isn't plant-based. And so if you can like kind of, you know, kind of shed some light of, you know, maybe what some of the, the positives and the negatives were as you kind of, since, you know, it's been a few near, years now, um, what has that really been like, you know, for you, you know, unemotionally and also, you know, just the daily. Yeah. So I, I guess I was so, I was so in and passionate about it that, you know, I wanted to shout it from the mountaintops, like, mm -hmm. this is what I'm doing now. And, you know, friends and family, it is still, it is still coming up in conversations because I think um, there's a lot of preconceived notions about being plant-based and how limiting the, you know, the, the diet is and all these things like, you know, well, you, you just eat salad and I hear, I hear the whole spectrum of things. So I'm still, I'm still having conversations with family members and friends about it, which I'm proud to do. Um, but it really, it really just needs to be um, something that you're, you're, you you kind of want to, you know, either, either start out or go all in and just, just listen to yourself, listen to your body, make sure you're doing what, what makes you feel good. And you'll, you'll be successful. Yeah, no, that's, that's super helpful. I mean, I know a lot of people, um, you know, it's one of like, because it is, you know, which is kind of, it still blows my mind. And I still think it's bizarre that, you know, it's just plants. We all eat plants, right? It's just choosing to eat that just mostly or, or all plants. Right. And so, you know, when you kind of have that, like, you know, a kind of extreme viewpoint where, you know, it's hard to connect with people who, who maybe do eat, you know, animals when you're so compassionate and so ethical. Like I remember when I first went plant-based, like it, it just hit such an emotional chord for me. And I just feel empathetic as a person, like ever since I was young, that it even, it heightened it. And so I would, so I would get sad if I saw a giant piece of steak laying on someone's table, you know, on someone's plate at the table. And, um, but I kind of like had to walk myself through that, you know, emotionally and be like, okay, like that's their decision. That's on their own journey. At least the animal was killed and at least it's getting consumed and not going to waste. And you'd have to like, kind of talk yourself through that process. Um, and so I, you know, I know, you know, a lot of people who initially go plant-based for the ethical and it's really hard, you know, it's really emotionally difficult. And, um, I think it's, it makes, you stronger, you know, when you have to kind of like sit and, you know, you know, you don't want, you're not judging the person you're judging like the industry and you're judging how people are kind of blindsided and they're not shown the truth and you live near, you know, a cattle farm. And so most people don't know what goes on in cattle farms and, and they, they don't have to see it every day. Right. Um, and so, you know, it was probably even more intense for you because you were just constantly kind of making that connection. Um, so it's, it was, yeah. it's tough, but, um, you know, like out of anything, something beautiful is always born. And so, you know, any struggle will kind of push you to your edge. So, you know, starting a business, um, is not easy, especially, you know, in today's world and the economy the way it is so you decided to follow that passion and to try to make the difference that you wanted to have in the world so um what was you know what what made crummies just be a recipe at home and what translated it to like okay i'm going all in like what was that point for you yeah so we we were really just making it in the kitchen we had you know we'd make big batches and just have some in our freezer to pull out every once in a while and we started to you know pull out these jars of our product and we're just like, well, why, you know, why, why couldn't we just make this available for everybody? You know, I think we have something really special here. Um, we'd hear it, you know, obviously your friends and family are going to be super supportive of a, a new business venture. So we decided um, that we were going to start at a farmer's market. And I went to the uh, farmer's market in Greeley, Colorado, you know, with, with a dream and a, a cooler and it just really hit. I was I was doing some unintentional market research at that point. 
I didn't even realize that it, that was happening because um, I wasn't really, I didn't have a business plan at that point. I was just wanting to see what the reaction was. And even in a, an agricultural county, like I, like I live in, it really was successful. And I think people were open to the idea. It's so encouraging. I'm so happy for you. Yes. Um, and so I guess question when it, you know, initially was ethical, when did you kind of start diving into all the health aspects of being plant-based and when did that connect for you? Yeah. Well, I think we were, we were noticing, um, like I was saying, all the, all the ingredients that were going into this stuff and kind of wondering why and what, what, you know, what purpose did they serve on this platform? And, you know, if you take out, if you take out a lot of processed items out of your diet, um, you know, my blood pressure dropped, my skin cleared up. Like I was noticing things. I was noticing things about my, my own body um, that I was really enjoying. And I also just felt less, um, you know, felt mentally good about it, but also started to feel a lot healthier personally. And that's, that's kind of when the shift happened. I, I knew that there was always, you know, a lot of a lot of research surrounding a plant-based diet and being healthier for you, but really, I had to see it for myself and mm -hmm. and um, kind of recognize those those changes. That's awesome, and I think a lot of people, like you know, they'll, they'll watch a documentary or their doctor will refer them, you know, to kind of clean up, you know, clean up their health with, with more plants. And um, I think one of the first go tos is, okay, if I'm not doing it for ethics. And I'm just trying to do it for health. Maybe I, you know, I just grab these vegan meat alternatives and, and that kind of becomes like the basis of your calories. And that's one of the things, you, you know, that we share so well, we both kind of stand for less, less processed food, like as little of the percentage of processed food, the better for our health. Right. I'm across the board. I and mean, that's something that like science is like really kind of proven out at this point. And I guess our instincts know, right? Like we look at an apple, versus like an apple, like, you know, processed bar, we're all going to say the apple is going to be healthier for Thank us. You. Like, it's just, we know. Um, but just because of like the transition and, 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 you know, products like Beyond Meat and Impossible Burgers and Meatless Farms, like they have really, really great, you know, um, intentions to get people that are needing that mirror exact takes texture, you know, from the animal products. But, you know, I, I call them the loyalty foods. Like, yes, they're great. Will I eat one once a year? Maybe, you know, yes. But am I, do I want to eat it every day? No, it's, it's for me, it's the level of where I'm at with my health journeys. I don't feel comfortable eating it every day. Um, I'd rather eat something like your product, right? That is, I can, it's literally all whole foods. I can read all the ingredients. The first ingredient is like cauliflower. Like, okay, this is, these are real foods. Um, and I don't feel any type of guilt when I eat it. And I don't have to wonder like, and you know, my insight being in the food manufacturing business as well is like, once you dive in and you realize, you know, how processed foods are and these food additives and, and preservatives and extractions, um, you know, the way that they're derived is, is very unnatural. Um, and anything that's unnatural, you know, can have harmful effects on the body and, the thing, you know, that your product kind of highlights is like, you can have the same exact taco, you can have the same exact, you know, whatever it is, lasagna that you're making, um, and just not have to have that worry or that question of like, hmm, why did it taste exactly like beef? And, and why did it, you know, and, and it just takes the worry away. And so um, I'm like, you know, products like yours, I'm like the pickiest plant-based person in the world like if I don't make it ooh, I'm like I'm so sensitive but if yours is like I would not even blink an eye and I would want to eat it every day I feel good giving it to my nieces and nephews and so um I'm personally super grateful for what you're doing because it you know it, it starts to clear a path for for healthier you know plant-based and health instead of plant-based and you know just getting people to eat the alternative so so I'm just geeking out and thanking you for what you're doing. Um, yeah. But one of the things that, you know, I wanted to kind of ask you about was, you know, once you dove into it, you know, you had such a pure, just a pure recipe. Why didn't you, you know, start doing the food scientific route and adding the additives and the preservatives? Like what, what stopped you from kind of fitting that mold that every other company does? Well, um, I mean, at first, 
it was, I mean, we are a small startup. So getting the resources to, you know, take this, you know, to the level of beyond and impossible, we're just not there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, I do appreciate what you said about their, their goals and their vision in this, in this um, industry. Cause I think they are really spreading the word about, about plant-based eating and making it more um, attractive to Mm -hmm. people that are, you know, not so sure or veggie curious or things like that. But for us, it was, it wasn't just looking at processed um, ingredients. I felt like these were also processed flavors and you get such great flavors from natural items like our ingredient list. And it also takes on spices and, you know, things you want to add into it. It it takes it on so well, it was just super unnecessary. So we just, we just wanted to keep it simple. And, you know, there's a lot of um, items that are going into food um, that make it you know, extended shelf life or improve the taste and texture. I think we were already there. So I, I just felt it, felt it wasn't needed. That's amazing. And, I, you know, and staying true to that as you continue to grow, you know, more pressure comes on of like, okay, you know, maybe a larger contract may come through, but they want you to do X, Y, and Z. And it's hard. Like people don't realize for an entrepreneur, when you get that pressure and you know, you're, you're not making money because you're, you know, you're, you're a startup And you want to get those bigger deals to get the product into more stomachs. But a lot of the pressure that we can get from those large purchase orders is like, oh, well, we need you to do this, this, and this. And, you know, being able to say, you know, stick true to your ethos and say, no, you know, there's so many companies that have these additives and preservatives, like the shelf life that we have is because it's a whole food, it's natural. And I don't want to have to compromise on that. And you shouldn't have to. And, um, I, you know, just by my interactions with you, like, I know you guys are going to stay true to that. And that makes me feel like, yes, like one will break through that will be, you know, that will remain the same integrity. Um, and so, so that's really exciting. And I'm, you know, at Food Nerd, we're like super passionate about the, just the way the foods are processed and the additives. Um, and, you know, I think from the pros and cons of, of using them, kind of like you said, like, there's just so many more pros to not using them. Um, and like, just why bother? If, if you can get whole foods in your body, your body and they taste delicious, like, you know, I think we forget the goal isn't to maybe mirror exactly like the piece of flesh that we're trying to place in that burger or that taco. But I mean, you can get really stinking close with some incredible spices and incredible formulas just of whole foods. And like, why have to take it that another five percent you know like and that's kind of where i think the whole food plant-based movement is really pushing it's like we don't have to do that like let's kind of stop with our you know our palates expecting you know this absolute perfection and and you know that's one of the things that is we we really have the food industry to blame you know we've kind of have such heightened palates because of all the artificials and all of those things that aren't natural, um, that we almost we expect it to taste very, very intense every bite and um, those intense sugars and salts and fats. And, um, but when you eat whole foods, like your palate does change, yes. right? Yeah. Like for the better, <laughs> for the better. And it, it, you know, it's only like my experience, it was like, it maybe took three weeks for like my change to really happen. And then that's all I craved was the whole foods. Like eating the process didn't satisfy me anymore. And like, I just like encourage anybody listening, like give your, give your palate a few weeks to like go through that transition phase. Um, because it, it's crazy how bad, how quick the body responds. And then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna want to eat products like yours on the daily and it's going to be the most emotionally satisfying taco you ever have, right. Or whatever, right. put it in. Um, so that's, yeah. So that's kind of like, um, yeah, I just really honor you guys for, for like doing that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough space. I, I, I can really empathize with you. It's tough. You know, there's a lot of pressure to, to make ingredients, you know, identical to meat products. So, um, so tell us a little bit about kind of, you know, you guys are, are an early startup. You, you know, um, I imagine, you know, kind of COVID hit probably at a very pivotal point for you guys. Can you kind of explain what your journey has been like since, I guess it's been six months. Wait. Oh, wow. I can't, it's, but you're right. You're right. Yes. Almost. It's been over six months, I believe. <clears throat> Goodness. It's hard. It's hard to, 
hard to you know recognize that but we were when when COVID got you know it's reared its ugly head um we were actually in the midst of a entrepreneurship accelerator program or i was rather um crummies was on its way to um hit a few restaurants on their menus it was you know really kind of gaining momentum and you know it's uh it's an interesting thing i think there's a lot of silver lining out of this pandemic it's absolutely an awful you know life altering situation for a lot of small businesses and families and we're just trying to navigate this new this new world we're living in it seems cliche to say that but there's going to be so many changes in food manufacturing food you know hygiene and all that out of this so we're just taking all that in um I've got really sick of the word pivot, so I like to say that we're oscillating because there's a lot of there's a lot of good ideas I had, and I'm not ready to totally shift from those. I'm going to come back to those, mm -hmm. but you know, like let's look at another way, you know, to make this work. The farmers markets, we weren't sure if they were going to happen this this season. Um, they did, luckily, but with changes, you know, with the masks and the extra sanitizing and the the social distancing, it did make it tricky and and different, but. Um, it was a very successful farmer's market season for us, and we were just really excited to still be out, out doing it. So the restaurants may have uh, slowed down, understandably so. You know, their their worlds have been turned upside down, but we're we're looking for more uh, retail placement um, in that in that light. That's awesome. And can people, um, I guess, if if they want to try companies, can they order them through your site right now? How how can people access them anywhere in the in the U.S.? Like, what is your what is your channel like now? Yeah, we um we started an online platform. Unfortunately, the uh, the fact is it is frozen. So shipping it outside of Colorado has uh, I have a few irons in the fire um, to get that going, but we haven't quite cracked the frozen shipping code yet mm -hmm. to make it affordable for a small business as well as my customers. So if you are in Colorado, you are able to order it online, and I just bring it to your front door. And that's, that's, awesome. that's, yeah, and we are in a few stores around Northern Colorado, but I'm um, definitely looking to expand. That's awesome. Yeah, look, you know, I can definitely attest to it. We started out as a fresh nationwide shipment uh, meal prep company and logistics is really, really difficult, you know, to get the fresh product. Um, and COVID has kind of shown that like people, we, we want things delivered right to our house. Right. Um, but, you know, when you're competing with larger companies that have just such, you know, competitive costs for shipping, it's, it's difficult for, for startups. Um, so I empathize with you and I'm excited for when you guys pull that iron out of the fire and you guys are able to, you know, to kind of, you know, ship it to me here in New York, mm -hmm. um, because I will definitely, you know, be in an, on any type of subscription plan that you have. Thank um, you. because I would, like I said, I feel so good about eating products like yours. Um, and I want them in my, fr my freezer at all times. Um, and so, so one of the things, I know this is like your, one of your taglines, which I love, and it's from the land, not the lab. Um, and I love that because, you know, it, it just kind of simplifies a lot of different, like it hits a lot of different things, but right. you know, you know, the land part, I, I really want to kind of like emphasize, it's not just like these products have weren't Aren't synthetic. They weren't designed or formulated based on any type of chemical processes. Instead, they're from nature, the way nature grew it. Um, and you guys are just putting it together perfectly, right? So that's really super simple. But, you know, kind of going back into like the initial why you guys started this was to have like a ground kind of beef alternative, like a meat based mm -hmm. alternative. Um, and I think that, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, and I also, I often have to remind myself this, like every few months I have to go back and, and I update and I read this, the stats on the animal agricultural impact on the planet. Um, because that is one of the biggest reasons I decided to, to live a plant-based lifestyle, um, was because, you know, I want to have kids one day and I want those kids to live on a planet, um, that is safe and sustainable. And, um, I think we all kind of, because, the farms aren't staring us in the face. We're not seeing the direct, you know, devastation to our planet where other countries may, or we're not seeing the destruction to the Amazon rainforest. So it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Um, and so like anybody that's listening, you know, it, you know, the, I just want people to kind of feel empowered that, you know, eating a product like a whole food plant-based meat alternative, like crummies, 
you don't have to be completely plant-based. You can literally just even one day a week, one meal a week would make the biggest difference on the, on the planet. And I want people to realize that, you know, to feel empowered from it, you know? And so, um, one, every bite you take counts, it's a vote. Um, and so I don't want people to feel like you have to completely switch over. Um, you can have beef next to your crummies in your freezer and, and you're still going to help the planet. And so I kind of wanted to run down some high level stats that, you know, like, to this day, like still shock me. And I just hope they kind of sink in. And I know that like, you know, while you're doing this is like going to, it's probably already had such a big impact on the planet. So thank you for that for one. Um, But yeah, on average right now, per person in the U S we eat 200 to 20, 220 to 340 pounds of beef per person per year. So that's, you know, two to, to 200 pounds to 300 pounds a year, just of beef a year. Um, and to grow one pound of beef, it takes 2,500 gallons of water, which is, it, it accounts for 50% of all fresh water used in the U.S. goes to raising cattle. Um, and it accounts for roughly 90% of the destruction of the Amazon rainforest to this point. Uh, and, you know, and I have one more stat and like those just, just those alone, like blow my mind. And I'm just like, wow, like the impact that, you know, when I, you know, that your company can have over the next five years, like it just, it just excites me because it shows that we're going in the right direction. We're, we're doing these incredible things that will have the biggest impact. And even though you may not see it right now when you're in the trenches and you're in startup mode, but like, these are the things that you guys are doing and just so grateful for it. But one last stat and then I'll stop. <laughs> Um, is so it takes from one piece of land, um, you will always have 15 times more protein that you can grow from a plant-based source versus an animal source, 15 times. Um, you know, it takes a one sixth of an acre to feed a vegan and it takes three acres to feed a meat eater. Um, and just to put that into perspective, you know, like I said, again, the crowding out effect, even if you just eat you know, meatless Monday, whatever it is, the biggest, the biggest difference. So what is, you know, I guess, what are some of the things like how to, I know, you know, these stats, but how do they kind of hit you and how do they kind of shape and form, um, you know, crummies? Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you for sharing those. It's, I think it's really important to be um, aware, like you said, of what's going, what's going into your mouth at every meal. And, you know, you talk about, how much it takes to raise one, you know, cow, let's say, but I'm, you know, I'm around thousands of acres of feedlots. You just, I mean, you just think about that number growing exponentially and, you know, we're all, we're all going to be here for a while, you know, hopefully, and we're going to, you know, some of us are going to have children and they're going to have children. We want, we want the planet to be here for them and to thrive. And I just feel that the, the enormous pressures on, commercialized meat and society is just you know it's it's staggering and i like you said one meal a day but you you make that maybe three meal or you know three meals a day or three meals a week you know there's there's a, a term reducitarian that was that. yeah was something that we were we were um introduced to you know as we kind of formed our business plan and decided who we were really targeting mm-hmm. and really it was you know a reducitarian is somebody that's just looking like is aware of is aware of the impacts of the meat industry but maybe isn't ready to go full plant-based or full vegan so trying to trying to just ease into it and it is so it is so you know important to just take that one step and like you said give it give it a few weeks you know maybe it might take longer for some folks but just give it a chance yeah no absolutely i love that reducitarian i mean it, it it's you know, I, I struggle with that all the time. Like, you know, do I want to say I'm vegan? Do I want to say I'm plant-based? Right, right. Because it, it just automatically has, you know, associations with it. So sometimes like I, I just to say, I love plants. <laughs> I just, I'm just going to eat a playful of plants and yeah, I'm not going to label it, you know? And I think that, you know, I, that's the kind of the vibe that I get from your, your company is that it, it, it's not, you know, it, it really is that kind of for everybody, right? It, it, it has that feel. So yeah, so I'm 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 super stoked about that. Um, oh, reducitarian. 
I know. I know. I w- I loved it when I first heard it. I was like, all right, that's going on everything. So right. <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. Um, and so some of the other things that I, I kind of wanted to to kind of pick your brain on is, you know, in in your competitive space, right? I guess competitive within the the vegan world. Um, do you see a lot of of you know kind of competitors popping up? And and what is your um, you know, what is your view for the future for the next five to 10 years? Like, what do you see kind of your industry kind of leaning towards in the, in the meat alternative space? I, I see it going a lot of places. I see it going up. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of research behind um, plant-based meat alternatives on the upswing. I think COVID has actually increased that. Mm-hmm. More people are looking into plant-based meat alternatives in their diet. The so the goal for Crummies, you know, we had a, we had actually had a lot of goals before COVID. Um, so we've kind of just tried to be more, more cognizant and realistic about how we're going to approach all these. Um, you know, for us as a, as a startup and as an entrepreneur, I'm always going to say it's, it's, it's going to be more successful the next year and the next year and the next year. And we're, we're already seeing those trends happen. So I think the more exposure we get, the more retail placement, it will absolutely absolutely be um, vital to, to this, this company and business. So we're really excited about what the future holds regardless. So. That's awesome. What is like one of the, um, so you, obviously you're a female entrepreneur, you know, a female vegan entrepreneur, which is like my favorite group of <laughs> entrepreneurs. Um, what is, you know, you know, what are, have you experienced any, you know, difficulties as far as being a female entrepreneur? Um, and then, you know, also, you know, any advice that you'd have for, for maybe anybody that's, you know, looking to start their own business and, and, you know, obviously male and female, very similar in so many different aspects, but we do have differences and we do have a lot of different challenges within the space. You know, I like to always talk about, I'm so stat focused, but you know, only one to 2% of female entrepreneurs get funding, you know, to really scale their business. And, funding is what will make a break a startup, right? I think there's a reason why such, you know, almost 90% of, of businesses like don't succeed with after the first 12 months. And, um, you know, it, it's really difficult to get funding, but even more so for the female. So what has been your experience? Uh, have you had any types of issues with that or what's your attitude towards it? You know, not as, not in as being a female entrepreneur per se, but as being a vegan entrepreneur, um, at the farmers markets, you know, you're kind of face to face with your your critics as well mm-hmm. as your as your praise. But it is really just um, being open to the conversations, whether positive or negative. You never know what's what's going to come out of them. I've had some really really um, troubling and negative conversations with folks um, that weren't in support of what I was doing. They said, and they ended up they ended up trying the product. So if you just you know you just got to take Take it. everything that everyone's saying, positive, negative, and just just keep your keep your focus and keep your your vision in mind. And you really you really will surprise yourself as well as your customers and people that you didn't even think were going to be your customers might might end up trying your product. That's awesome. What is one of the? I guess you were because um, we all have it. You know, being an entrepreneur is one of the most difficult things to do um, because rarely do things go your way, <laughs> right? So um, like you said, pivoting or oscillating the way you said, you know, what is what is like your, you know, I, we all have our own kind of little things that we do to kind of like get us through those like days of like, I can't do this or, you know, what is, what is, you know, do you have a routine? Do you have like, I have like, uh, I have a whole like, I have vision boards. I have these things, you know, I have like these um, phrases and motivational things that I'll read to myself. Like, what is something that, that you do to kind of like keep you going? Or maybe you're like, I don't need it. <laughs> I love vision boards. I have a few of those, you oh, know, perfect. For, for, yeah, for different, for different uh, aspects of my life. I also find a lot of strength um, when I was part of this entrepreneurship accelerator program through e for all I, I was, I was lucky enough to meet, um, you know, nine other entrepreneurs and have, you know, a cohort relationship. I reach out to them, you know, weekly, if not, if not more often than that, to get ideas, bounce ideas off of them. Um, my husband is obviously super supportive. I have a very supportive family. So I'm always, I'm just constantly, again, having these conversations and just, you know, letting it out because you never know what, what you're going to gain from somebody else hearing that, like, hey, you know, why don't you do it this way? And 
it's just amazing what um, what can come out of you know you know these ideas we have. It's it's always going to be a roller coaster. I think you know you got to ride ride those highs and just just deal with the lows. But there's always going to be another you know another round coming up. Just stay Absolutely. positive. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm so happy. To <laughs> you know, after kind of being in the space for for some years now, you know. It really is about creating a support system for yourself and, you know, making sure. Um, and I, I personally think for anybody that has a plant-based or a vegan mission um, is already has just such a great support system because outside of, you know, outside of just being plant-based, like we know, like the animals and the planet, like we have all these other things that push us and, and, you know, knowing how big your heart is and how compassionate you are. I know that that's like, one of the things that will kind of be your own personal internal support system, which is like exciting because I know like we'll be having this conversation in five years from now and, you know, it will be the same, you know, kind of, we're still here. We're still, you know, we're still making the impact. And so, so that's really encouraging. So I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you have that support system and um, you know, we would love, you know, as you know, myself, but just in, in the whole team to kind of support you guys in any way. And um, I hope anybody listening, you know, if you're not in Colorado and the product's not available, maybe when you do hear this, maybe it will be. So really, you know, to kind of stay up to date and, and to keep following Crummies uh, along your guys' journey. What is your, I guess, um, what exactly is your, um, how long have you guys been in business? Has it been, I know you, you went plant-based in, in 2017. When did you officially launch Crummies? Just so we can put like a time frame for people. Yeah. It was a it was a year in May, so we're, we're oh, wow. about a year and a half. Yes. Yay! You made it, you made it past the year round, which is like the hardest part. Which is yes. Okay. Okay. So anybody listening, um, yeah, by the time you hear this, it will be you know a little past a year and a half for for crummies. Um, and so in this space, you never know. You guys will be well. You'll be in three months. So make sure right. you know. Stay tuned. Exactly. Exactly. So everybody, you know, really stay tuned and, and keep following them. Um, and, you know, can you tell us where, you know, to follow you guys on social media and tell us, tell everybody listening where your website is and how, how people can support you? Yes, thank you. So it's, uh, the website is, is coloradocrummies.com. We are on Facebook and Instagram and it's at Crummies Co. So Crummies C-O. And thank you so much. Yes. That's awesome. Um, okay, anything that you know, I feel like I could talk like now I just like want to talk to you about all the different like emotional sides of eating, but I know like so much of what is that we've we've kind of touched upon of like, you know, it's it is like that personal journey, you know, and like yes, like for me, I remember my biggest like emotional food. I have a few of them, but you know, goulash was one for me. My mom always made goulash and um the ground beef was like was always the, the, you know what I'm saying was always in it. And so, um, one of the first thing when I saw crummies was like, it brought me back to that comfort food. It brought me back to the goulash and like having that crumble in there and just making it so hearty. Um, and so like, I, you know, to the, as a plant-based person now, like I eat the same emotionally, you know, same way through my food because there's companies like yours that like allow that. Right. And, and so, you know, I think you can probably attest to that too. Like, that's probably why you made crummies was that was probably one of your emotional foods. I know like the taco filling, like that was probably, was that your main go-to? It was, um, taco Tuesdays were a huge deal in our house and they still are. So we had to, um, it's, it's fantastic in tacos, but also like you mentioned lasagna, like Mm -hmm. it's great in spaghetti. We are always trying to find new ways to use it and really haven't found a bad way yet. So, so keep in touch because we're going to, you know, our recipes are always changing and expanding and we love to, we love to keep innovating. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, well, I'm excited that you, know, <laughs> that you guys are like on that, you know, that R&D kind of product expansion path too, because that's, you know, that's where I think a lot of the power will, will be is like, you know, it's kind of like taking your blinders off and be like, oh, actually I can throw this on my salad or I can throw this on my rice and I can throw this literally in like anything. And it also makes you a better chef too, because you're not limited to like, it's just, just tacos or it's just this, like, you know, play, be playful, kind of sprinkle it, sprinkle crummies everywhere. Have (laughs) have fun with it. Cause it really, it, I mean, like I said, my husband did most of the cooking and now it's, now it's me. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm constantly in the kitchen. Just, I have found a whole new, whole new avenue for some of this energy and this passion. So it's great. 
love it. Awesome. Well, um, is there anything that you want to say, you know, to anybody listening? Um, you know, anyway, I'll just, this is your, this is your moment to, to kind of connect and, um, you know, whether it's about crummies or it's about, you know, just plant-based journey. Um, yeah, whatever your heart is, is wanting to say. Thank you. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity that, that Food Nerd has given us. We, we are really excited about what the future holds. Like I said, um, it really, my asks are pretty, pretty simple. Um, you know, I would, I would appreciate a follow or a like, but also just to support um, small and local businesses as much as possible. Um, there is a big, a big, uh, you know, there's, there's some big things happening out there and, and you're not going to know about them until you, you get to the markets or kind of look online to some of these, some of these great um, entrepreneurs and, and visionaries that are coming into the space. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, please, anybody listening, make sure to go to Crummy Co. And that's really how you can find them on the social medias. Um, and yeah, really kind of stay tuned, follow, support um, them in any way. I know we will, you know, as a company and me personally, like I will, first time everybody says, well, what do you eat? And they're totally talking about a meat product. Crummies will be the one first ones I suggest. So, um, so I'm super grateful for, for you being on the podcast today. Um, and you know, anybody, please feel free to reach out to Stephanie. If you have any questions about anything, I know also real, real quick, your products are allergen free. They are. Yeah. We, we oh my to be, God. yeah, soy, soy and nut free as well as gluten free. Yeah. We really wanted to, to push the, uh, the allergens out of there. Oh my God. I can't believe I forgot. Like that was one of the big things that I was like, super geeked about is because most of the alternatives have the allergens in them you know they're, they're gluten mainly you know byproduct or soy so oh my god that's huge anybody listening that like wants to eat you're, you're like solving so many issues anybody that wants to have you know plant-based like meat alternative but also like knock off the whole yucky list that's out there just like get it all off in one crummies is yeah, you guys are amazing. I'm super excited for you guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, but yes, thank you again, Stephanie. Um, and please feel free, anybody that's listening, to reach out to Stephanie. Um, and everybody, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Raw Conversations. Please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. And visit foodnerdinc.com for more um, research and scientific blogs on plant-based eating. And until next time, everyone, nerd on. Stephanie, thank you so much. Thank you.